Hey guys, what's going on? It's Matt's Videos Weekly. Whoa! Another delicious intro to Massive Joe's Weekly Word. Episode 56, Nevosh. 56. Got the new lens in his bitch! Look at this. Check out the focus pull on the hose. It's not focusing, it's focusing no, it's on me. Not. Oh, the focus pull on the knee. But look what anyway, we're, we're making up. upgrades. Upgrades on the YouTube channel. Oh, look at that focus. Oh, look at that, delicious. Topics of discussion, Neve. Back in stock, new products coming soon, USA delays, March Madness, Arnold Classic, Ask Neve. Let's go, baby, and we got uh, 42 Ask Neve questions this week. Ask Only me. four pages, but the writing is small, man. 42. Do up to screenshot them straight off YouTube. All right, first topic of discussion, Neve. So back in stock, as you just saw, drop factor by MTS. Finally, get your, get your shred on. Oh, now, now that we get in the video, oh, there we go. There look, go. look at the zoom and Look focus. at the zoom and focus action, bloat. And Max's WPI HL, back in stock in both sizes. Uh, both sizes. And, and both, both flavors, flavors of chocolate and vanilla. So Next topic of discussion. High lucine whey protein isolate. Uh, new mm. product. Very popular. Yeah. The WPI HL. I've actually been using it. The HL stands for high leucine. That's WPI stands for whey protein isolate. It is Who would have thought? Yeah. Max is getting creative with the names of their products, man. All right. Uh, in uh, new this week, up to the website. New product. Only one new product this week, yeah. Uh, Happens to be. Gentech Myo Insure. Yeah. Raw review dropped yesterday, man. Go check it out. It's an all day amino acid supplement. Got BCAAs, nitric oxide boost, got carnitine in there, Nevos. A little bit of caffeine as well. My personal favorite flavor, the great drank. What's that watermelon? Mm. It's delicious because it's naturally colored. No dyes and none of that shit. Next topic of discussion, Nev. Coming soon. P28 peanut butter. Should be this week. Cleared I saw the rep from, from the distributor in Australia and he, saw, he said to me, I saw him Monday two night. days ago and he said that it was shipping tomorrow, which would have been Tuesday, which means the shit should be in this week. Hopefully. All five flavors. Uh, and there goes my diet for the Arnold. Yeah. <laughs> coming soon, BPI Way HD. Yeah, BPI. you actually got a tub of that, maybe show them. Show the viewers at This home. is the granola crunch flavor. Yeah. So BPI entering the protein game, man, coming out with three new products, Way HD, which is like their blended WPI, WPC. Mm. Uh, oh, ISO sorry. HD, which is a whey protein isolate and whey protein hydrolysate. I'm really keen for that one. And the gainer, which is called the bulk muscle, which is interesting, uses the sweet potato as a carbohydrate source in combination with the whey protein. Wow. Never been done before, as go. far as I'm aware. Hopefully it doesn't taste like sweet potato. Well, yeah, mm. because that would be shit. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully in stock this week, Clash Apple Mango. Yep, that'll be here this week. The new flavor of the uh, ever popular MTS Clash is going to be coming in. Met. Core ABC. Also this week, finally. Cleared customs, finally. They f***ed on us with that shipment, oh, yeah. man. We wanted paperwork after paperwork after paperwork and then wouldn't accept the paperwork and then the ingredients were wrong and the values were wrong. I was like, It wasn't good. Come on. Anyway, and this uh, week. Prosup's Amino Links. Yeah, delicious. That's going to be dropping, uh, that should be dropping next week. You know what else is coming soon, Nevos? And what? I thought I'd better mention it in Weekly Word because I know the viewers will be interested. What? Mate, your uh, LeBron James jersey. Oh, yeah. Did Devin <laughs> should even be say what? Should be coming what? next. Nah, tell them. So, I said a few it's weeks ago. It's been a joke at MJHQ for the last week or so. So, I said a couple weeks ago that the Pusher Cat was going to get me a LeBron jersey for my birthday, but then Joey went ahead and bought it for me instead. Yeah. So there was, oh, there was kerfuffles at home. Straight from the US. Mario. I bought myself some, some fresh J's. I like, you know, we didn't play Mario Kart that night after she found out. She gave me the silent treatment. Anyway. Um, Apologies. Um, what were we talking? Oh, yeah. yeah so I you, bought some yeah, fresh J's. I threw your, you shouldn't mention where we get it from, man. Oh. We ain't getting no kick. But Dylan, bleep that shit out. Yeah, deep it. Deep. I do. Free promotion. Shit. Um, anyway, I bought myself some fresh J's from the US and I thought I'd be the good Samaritan and buy Nevosh the, the LeBron jersey that he's been wanting. Yeah. Anyway, J's arrive in the package. Yeah. No LeBron jersey. As well as everyone else's shit. Uh, mine was the one thing that was missing. They f on you. They, they must watch Weekly Word. I know. So they're, I, trying to, they're trying to give you some relationship advice. But what Joe does is as soon as I get a... Um, a package. Joey likes to take whatever I've got out of it and hide it somewhere around the office or warehouse. Usually, yeah. 
Same with my food. As soon as I heat up a food and then go serve a customer, he'll go and hide my food around the warehouse and I have to follow the smell to find it. He's a <laughs> Oh, it's good times at MJHQ, isn't it? It is. Anyway, next um, topic of discussion. USA delay, so I'll let you do that one because you're a bit more informed. Yeah, cool. So we, we mentioned last week in Weekly Web the price rise um, in particular on MTS Way because we got asked about it and asked Neve. But what you're going to see viewers at home, Australian viewers at home, is the Australian dollar has depreciated against the US dollar by almost 20% now over since the end of last What the f are you doing? <laughs> I just realized the jug's as big as my head. Were you mate. cooling your face down, were you? <laughs> The drugs anyway, big. the Australian dollar has depreciated by about 20% against the US dollar since the end of last year. So effectively what you're going to see is it could be up to 20% increase in the price of supplements produced in the US. And that's just based on the fact that the Australian dollar is not worth as much against the US dollar as it was towards the end of last year. MTS way we answer that in particular has gone up 10%. But you're going to see price rises across the board, across all supplements that are produced in the US without doubt over the next couple of months. We just got an email yesterday that the price of dimethyl proteins are going up. Yeah, it would be across the board. Anything that's produced in the US that you have to buy US dollars to go and purchase with Australian dollars has gone up 20% just based on the exchange rate. So that's one thing we address. What also has happened in the US at the moment, and Dilip, the cutting specialist, is going to cut some images on screen right now, is there's massive uh, strikes in the ports in the US, and in particular, the, uh, the West Coast ports, so Long Beach, shipping out of LA, shipping out of California. So when we send products from the US, we can either send them via air freight, which is very expensive, or sea freight, which is not as expensive. Most products being heavy come sea freight to reduce the cost of freight. What's happened is the, the people that work on the docks in the US have been striking, there's been industry action, and so ships haven't been sailing with goods coming out of the US. And Dilip, you just cut those images on, man. You can see the, the, the kind of chaos that that is causing in Long Beach in particular. Mm. So you've got that on the West Coast. On the East Coast, the weather has been <laughs> So ships haven't been able to sail out the East Coast. So effectively, you've got this backlog of all of these shipments of shit. And it's not just supplements. It's everything that's produced in the US that has to ship from the US to anywhere across the world hasn't been able to ship, man. Like we've had the, the core ABC sea freight order Luckily, we air freighted because that sea freight order still hasn't left the US. Yeah. It was placed almost two months ago. It's still sitting there. And it's just because of, of weather on the East Coast and, and union action on the West Coast. So it's just sitting in a container on, in the dock in Long Beach. So what are we trying to say? We're trying to say Australians are getting <laughs> at the moment. Because <laughs> the, then... the price of supplements is going up because the Australian dollar is depreciated. Plus, there's going to be a shortfall because nobody can actually ship anything out yeah, of the so US. It's not just us that have a problem. So every single distributor in Australia will have yeah. a problem of just not being able to get stock. So I would possibly look at maybe taking more Australian-made supplements in the short term. Yeah. Really, because they're going to be cheaper and they're going to be more readily available, as far as we can see. Next topic of discussion, Neve. March Madness. Oh shit, I'm gonna let you take the lead on this one. Is it the what I'm thinking of? Well, it's the Arnold Classic, obviously, which people know about, and then it's the week following so the week Arnold after, Classic. Uh, we got three big names mm -hmm. coming to Massive Joe's. Correct, on the Tuesday. On the Tuesday from 4.30 to 6.30? Yes. Massive Joe's, Flinders Park. Uh, no, Tuesday is Dernancourt. Oh, Dernancourt. Yep. A Master of Dernancourt. Yep, the we big have dog. BSN sponsored athlete. Three times. 212 Mr. Olympia. Flex Lewis, in store at Master Joe's Dernan Court. Yep, 4.30 to 6.30. On, on, on the following day, Wednesday, Wednesday, we have at Master Joe's Flinders Park. The we, one, the only. The ON sports athlete, Steve Cook. Steve Cook, 4.30 to 6.30. We're gonna shoot a separate video on this with full more, with more in depth details. This is just the, the Kentucky tour. And then on the Saturday, 21st of March, we got Big Ronnie coming. The big dog's coming back. So he's back. He's coming back. Do you know where he's going to be? Uh, I'm not sure where, and I'm not sure what time. But 21st, uh, it's a Saturday. 
he's coming back. He'll be there. And you do have the opportunity to work. We're doing not just the store visits, but the workout with all these guys, man. You hop on the Facebook page, all the details are there. Or check out the video when we drop it. We're going to put the full details in there. We just thought we'd give you guys a quick snippet right now, man, because the shit's epic. Yeah, and that leads us also onto our next topic of the Arnold Classic. Next topic of discussion, if. So on Saturday, the 14th of March. Yep. My birthday. Yeah. Isn't your birthday planning out oh. to be? Not only your birthday, we're going to be in, in Melbourne at the Arnold with two massive jerseys, mega boots, man. We're going to have we're going to have Rich Piana there. We're going to have Mark Loblin there. We're going to have Doug Miller there. And that particular day, that Saturday, who else coming? Ronnie Coleman. Big Ron. We'll be at going to come booth spend some time on the massive jerseys booth, man. We're thinking it's probably going to be in the afternoon. We haven't confirmed the time just yet. But it's going to be for a couple of hours, mm. and he's going to come join Rich Piano, Mark Loblin, and Doug Mill, and the whole TMJ crew on the Massive Joe's booth Saturday, 14th of March at the Arnold. Exactly. It don't get much better than that. It's going to be big. We've only got a couple more weeks of Arnold. Uh, the news keeps getting better. A couple more weeks of Arnold uh, information to drop on the viewers at home. How long is it? Like three mm. and a bit weeks? Must be. Hmm. Next topic of discussion, Neve. Ask me. All right, let's go. 42 questions. Got to be quick, man. We've got 30 minutes, 42 questions. Chase Hare wants to know, hey guys, what should I do to build some mass on my arms? Um, you have to train arms directly. Yep. So uh, a lot of people just train like back and biceps together or train chest and triceps together, whatever. Or train biceps and triceps yep. together. And just train biceps on their own for an hour. Yep. Six or seven exercises, five, six, seven exercises, then hit triceps on their own. I mean, if you want something to grow, you have to prioritize them. And where should he go to check out workouts? Go to mathjoes.com uh, workout plans. Yeah. Uh, J21 want, wants to know, Neve, lately when performing calf exercises, I'm experiencing painful pumps in my shins. Just wondering if you have had any similar problems or know what may be causing this. I don't get pumps in my shins, but... So the front, getting pumps. I don't know. You're probably flexing your, your, your... What's the muscle that runs on the front of your calf? I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, You're a PT, yeah. you should I know. I can't remember. Anyway, the muscle on the front, it gets flexed when you push your toes up towards the ceiling. So you're probably actually flexing that part of the of where you're doing calf raises. Yeah, so maybe um, point your toes down. That's what I'd be doing. Yeah. Or just don't flex as you come don't, up. Oh, don't, don't, flex your, don't flex your feet. Just Zach your Baxter wants to I know. I've got a bit to do to mind muscle connection, so just focus on that mind muscle connection on your calves. Zach Baxter wants to know, hey guys, I work long hours and don't get into the gym till about 7 to 8 p.m. Like, like us, us. Mm. we usually train about 7.30. Uh, been taking the pre-workout core fury extreme, but start struggling to sleep on one scoop. Any suggestions of how to help this? Maybe take half a scoop. I mean, I, I still can take one scoop and fall asleep by 11 o'clock. Yeah. I train at seven o'clock, so yeah. maybe just try taking three quarters of a scoop or half a scoop or try a different pre-workout. Try a different pre-workout that's not as high. Like, core fury is very high in stim. Yeah, so maybe maybe try, try like an MTS clash or something. Which, yeah. which is more caffeine-based. It does have your stim in there, but more caffeine-based. Yeah. Lee Clays wants to know, hey guys, I get up very early in the AM for work. But call at the gym for one hour. So he goes to the gym first thing in the morning before work. Uh, what's the best thing to eat at that time of morning? Along with taking my pre-workout, got myself some oxygen on your recommendation, thinking about stacking it. Uh, what, no, that's two questions. That's two f***ing questions! He tricked me! He did. I'm answering the first one. What's the best thing to eat that time of the morning? First thing, before um, he goes to the gym. We still eat your complex carbs for your energy and your protein. He's from the UK. I mean, I Great I, Britain. Like, I'd still have just protein. And, I'd have protein and oats. Bitch. If you got time, eat steak and chicken, or chicken. Uh, sorry, chicken and rice, whatever you can. But if it was me and in the morning, I don't like waking up and eating chicken and rice first thing in the morning. So I'll have protein and oats, mate. <laughs> Neve's dieting tips 101. <laughs> Peter Nguyen wants to know, hey Joe and Neve, I love the concentration pump and kick that my pre-workouts give me, and was wondering which one of these three you guys would recommend: MTS Clash, Defcon One or Core Fury Extreme. At the moment, it's Core Fury Extreme. I would agree. But those three are all in my pre-workout, in my gym bag, so mm. they're my top three pre-workouts. They're all in my supplement com the cupboard, but at the moment, moment Core, Core Fury. Fury. That is one good pre-workout, is it not? It is. Damn. Voy Voy Bot wants to know, hey fellas, I just recently purchased MTS Clash and been using it for three days, and ever since then, my shit isn't solid. Every time I use Clash, it's like diarrhea. I've used Hyde Pre-Gym C4 Assault, this is the first pre-workout that has made me do this. What ingredient do you guys think it, that makes my number two look like this? 
<laughs> My bad for this awkward question. It's not an awkward question, man. Uh, it's it's, it, it's, it's, we're the people's company, man. The people want to know why their shit ain't solid. We're about to tell them. So it's probably due to your agmatine. Yep. <clears throat> I'd say definitely because hard doesn't have agmatine, pregium doesn't have agmatine, C4 doesn't have agmatine, and assault doesn't have agmatine. The only one thing Clash has that those don't have is agmatine, mm. and agmatine has been known to turn solid shit into wet shit. So yeah, it could be just too, yeah, you're taking to, depends on what inch you work out using as well. So yeah. if you're using, say, MTS uh, machine fuel, which also has agmatine. And you're using like three using, scoops? Yeah. You're and overdosing on agmatine, man. Which is just gonna go straight through. That's gonna make you. Shit through live needle. Exactly. David O wants to know, hey guys, I'm using some, some fat burner I've never seen. Anyway, some fat burner in the US, EpiBurn Pro. Never heard of it. Anyway, the bottle says not to have any more caffeine, but I'm using C4 anyway. F the bottle. That a problem or just a disclaimer so they don't get sued? Any advice to drop loads of fat? Shout out um, from New York. If you're using something with caffeine, I wouldn't be adding more caffeine from C4. At well. the same time. At the same time. You can have yeah. it. You can have it like six hours apart. Yeah, you spread that bitch out. Like if, or if you have your fat burner like first thing in the morning and you see four later on the day pre-workout, that's fine. But don't go having it at the same time. It's way too much caffeine. That's it. Nicholas Lloyd wants to know, hey guys, I'm looking for a nitric oxide to put into my BCAA machine fuel and carbolin shake. So he's taking machine fuel and carbolin and he wants to add nitric oxide booster. Uh, to help give me more energy. I remember you mentioning you both have taken just nitric oxide. I want to know what your thoughts on a brand are. Cheers from Indiana. Well, Clay Fuel already has a nitric oxide booster, which is agmatine. It does, but it's not correctly dosed, to yeah. be honest. So it's only 500 megs. So you want to take like a stim free. So if you want something to take like stack, stacked in stacked in by Ronnie Coleman. Yep, chuck that bitch in there. Hmm. You have a pre or intra workout, man. If you want intra, you throw it straight in machine fuel. And if you depends what flavor you're going, but the strawberry watermelon stacked in there. With, with a watermelon or mixed berry. Delicious. Marco Lowe wants to know: Can we cash in loyalty points at the Arnold's? No. No, we can't, man. But you know how f***ing busy we're going to be, Marco? We're going to be busy as shit, man. Without asking how many points you got, can I redeem it for this? Can yeah, take these not, points not at the Arnold, man. Any, uh, you, can, you can cash them in any time with any order. I don't know why you'd want to cash them in at the Arnold, to be honest. And Marco, I know you do place orders <coughs> quite frequently, so just hit me up at Sales and Master Joe's when you place your order and tell me what you want and I'll get you it sent out to you. Mr. Bam Bam Luigi wants to know, given that buy grow is expensive as f***, when you have to take four to two, four to six scoops a day, uh, which I have done and it's awesome, would it be all right just to take two? Uh, yeah, but I'll probably just have with your post-workout shake, post-workout. Yeah. So like taking two is going to be better than taking none, man. Yeah. So yeah. maybe just try. Even if you want, just try two scoops just post-workout. That's still going to get you thirty days worth. Cody Haven wants to know: Does having a stressful job change anything on the way that you train? Um. I feel like when I'm stressed out from work, I've, I feel mentally exhausted. Yeah. So by the time I get to the gym, yeah. I'm just exhausted and just want to go home and lay down. But yeah. I mean, sort of. The gym's your balance, man. Yeah. Gym is your stress relief. I use it as my stress relief. Yeah. So you it. stress the shit out of me at work. Yeah. So I go to the gym, move that light weight, like bags and feathers, feel good, man. But as soon as I have something, that's what, I mean, that's pretty much what I have a C4. Uh, C4. C4. I never have C4. I hate, f I hate C4, to be honest. Um, I'll never have. Uh, Sorry, sell you core. Yeah, only because it's not strong enough for me. Well, because I'm mentally. You gotta take like four scoops of that shit. Yeah, it's an entry level. Pre it's a good pre workout, but it's an entry level. I need at least two scoops. Yeah. Of that. But um, yeah, that's why I like, I like core fury because even when I feel like shit and don't want to train, I still feel like I'm training for hours. That's it. R three double D wagon wants to know: Will you guys be selling the pre workout and creatine supplements that are about to be released by the Hodge twins? Greetings from the ACT. Any plans? Well, you wouldn't know because you weren't privy to it, but I actually uh, didn't help the Hodge Twins formulate their products, but gave them uh, tips on the regulatory issues in Australia, if they were wanting to sell their products in Australia. Yeah. So I would lead on to that and say that if the Hodge Twins were planning on selling their products in Australia, they might be knock, knock, knocking on the door of their brothers at Massive Joe's. Would you say that would be a correct assumption? We've met them a couple times now. So it depends. It depends what their plans are, man. Like, we, to be honest, we don't hear that much from the Hodge twins because they're just so damn busy with everything. Yeah. But I'm sure that if they were planning on selling in Australia, the people's company would be taking care of the people. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, Nathan Ozzy wants to know, hey, fellas, what are your thoughts on drinking Coke Zero whilst dieting for them beach games? I love it. 
You're a big fan of Coke Zero, aren't you? Yeah, because it gives me, uh, obviously, put aside the fact that it's got your cancer causing chemicals and shit it's like that. It's got aspartame in there, yeah. is the, the yeah. sweetener they use in Coke yeah. Zero. Anyway, yeah. but I, when, I don't drink, I was drinking, say, like a litre every day. You were, yeah, you were. I was feeding yeah. off it. Um, you were drinking a lot of Coke Zero. I'll just have one 600 ml bottle with a cheat meal on Saturday night. Yeah. Now. So, I mean, yeah. I just don't like fizzy drinks. So me personally, I don't drink it. If you're just dieting for beach games, you're not dieting for a show or whatever, man, I think, yeah, yeah fine. Yeah. It's better than having normal. Cool, cool. that's it. Yeah. Brandon J if, wants if, to if know. If you're real serious, have your like, yeah, all day you may. Brandon J wants to know, what's your favorite supplement that is no longer available? I actually thought of this the other day. I know Did that, you really? I don't know that, and I didn't actually see this question. But you know what product I was a big fan of that you used to stock? I, that was before my time here at Massa Joe's. Yeah, what was that? MHP Dark Matter. Really? Mm. Dark, they don't make it anymore. Yeah. That was a cool product, man. Yeah. So you would say that's your? That's no longer available? Yeah, I would say that. For me, man, I'd probably go back to, I reckon the glory days of Gaspari. Mm. Remember when Gaspari used to have like Novadex XT and yeah. they had Halidrol liquid gels mm. and they had Plasma Jet. Mm. They had all those fucking awesome pill form products that they don't make anymore. And even if they did make, you wouldn't be able to get them in Australia anyway. Banned. Yeah, I'd probably say that like the glory, when, when Gaspari used to do that real kind of cutting edge shit. Yeah. Before they lost all of their employees to another supplement company who we're not going to mention. Mm. Those would probably be the ones I miss the most. Uh, Daniel Sharp wants to know, do you think I could still get swole even though I'm playing rugby? I still get five days a week training and two days rugby training. What are your thoughts, bruh? Yeah, as long as you're in a calorie surplus, um, if you're playing rugby, you're obviously doing a, a, at least a fair bit of uh, aerobic cardio. exercise, cardio. Yeah. So you don't want to burn into that muscle tissue. Rugby players are like bodybuilders who can sprint. Yeah, so as long as you're, as long as you're supplementing right. I think it's your duty to get swole, to be honest. Yeah, but it, as a rugby player. When you ever see a skinny rugby player? Never. Um, but yeah. Canardis16868 wants to know, I would like to know, what's the best meal replacement you would recommend? I know you guys did the BSN Synth 6, but I would like to know any other products that you can recommend or if I should take the BSN Synth 6. Looking to replace meals and I hit the gym to lose about 30 pounds due to work. Thanks, bro. There's two I'd recommend. Yep. One would be <clears throat> your BSN Synth 6. Good meal replacement. Because it's delicious as shit. Good meal replacement, a little bit, little bit. No, no, I'm gonna let you continue. You and, continue. And my other one is MTS Macrolution. I, my MTS Macrolution is my personal favorite. Mm. The one thing with Macrolution is it only comes in chocolate flavor. Yeah. But if you love yourself some chocolate, there's no problem. Yeah. Yeah. But I go one or the other. Macrolution is more of a meal replacement because it does have the, the green extracts in there. It's got the fiber in it. It's a, it's a much more uh, complete meal replacement than Synthesis 6 is. Yeah. But Synthesis 6 does come in like 25 flavors. That's delicious as shit. Yeah. Uh, Denzel Washington wants to know, how do you guys uh, take your store stock to the MJ's booth at Fitness Expos? I'm guessing someone drives up a few <laughs> days before from Adelaide in a van with all your stock, kind of like AFL teams do when they play into state. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, it's a funny question. Yeah, we, we drive our own trucks <laughs> I'll, I'll, <laughs> around the country. I'll try and answer this as politely as possible. Yeah. But we're putting a couple hundred thousand dollars into this expo. Yeah. Like in terms of booth space, the booth, the people that are coming over, us guys going over, everything. Yeah. We're taking more than a van's worth of shit. <laughs> Like we have packed the stock up, and there's there's uh, fif shit. there's fifteen pallets of stock already, and it doesn't include the booth, which isn't the booth. So there's going to be say eight. I don't even know how big that's going to be. Twenty pallets. It'd be we'd be sending a full forty foot container. Yeah, effectively right. worth of stuff. So you think of like yeah. A so we ain't taking a van. <laughs> like if we want, and it takes ten hours to drive to Melbourne. Yeah. yeah. With a van load, which isn't, which you might be able to fit maybe a pallet in. So if somebody wants to drive to back to and back from Melbourne, like twenty yeah. times, the way it works, Denzel, and I'm not sure if that's your true name, but if it is, I'm gonna call you Denzel anyway. Is there are um, freight uh, freight and logistics companies? <laughs> there is freight companies in Australia. Uh, no, but 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 to be honest, like it's not like you can go to the post office and I have to send a forty foot container. Yeah. Like it's different. There are specialized freight and logistics companies that are actually specialized for expos in particular. Yeah. That's what they do. 
Um, and so for these expos, they have these freight companies and they organize to come and pick up a container's worth of shit and drop it not only at the where the expo is, but they'll actually put it inside the expo hall, take it to where our booth is located and drop it there. Yeah. So it's all behind the scenes, but we, we ain't driving our own trucks. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Like, like, a, soccer, thinking. like a soccer mum. Uh, John Pettifer wants to know, hey, guys, just a quick question. You've come to the right place, John. Um, I'm currently dieting for my first bodybuilding show. I'm about two to three weeks. Are you two or three weeks out, bro? If you're dieting for a show, you're not, I'm two to three weeks out. I'm either two or I'm three. You're two. You know how many hours out you are yeah, man two weeks. i'm two day i'm two weeks two days three hours and 47 minutes out yeah isn't it yeah anyway uh, 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 I track my calories, protein, carbs, and fats, but all bro style. It's the best way to do it, man. But I've recently found out a pumpkin is less calories per hundred grams compared to broccoli. Is there any reason I should choose broccoli over pumpkin? Because pumpkin fills me up more than broccoli and it's less carbs and calories. So just getting your guys' view on this. Bro, I don't know where the hell you're getting your information from, but there is no way pumpkin is less carbs and calories than broccoli. There's no way. Pumpkin is a source. Pumpkin's, pumpkin has like, what, 15% carbs? It's a source of carbohydrate. It's a carbohydrate source. Broccoli is a, is a fiber source. And, I'm tiny, and, a, and a bit, bit of protein. protein. But mainly fiber. I'd be looking at Calorie King again. Or I, I'd information. be, yeah, I'd be checking out. And especially two to three weeks out, I wouldn't go swapping around your diet either. Yeah, uh, yeah, bro, like seriously, go get, I would use Calorie King, that's what I use. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure right now, you put pumpkin into Calorie King, compare it to broccoli and Calorie King, it's gonna give you the, the deets, and the deets are not what you think the deets are. Yeah. Stick to broccoli, man. John Teller wants to know, uh, have you or Joe tried Jet Mass by Gap and does it have really good gains? Well, oh, mate, I'm using it at the moment. You're loving it. I'm loving it. You make it. Let's show them the gains. Oh, gains. <laughs> My 2XLT. Jess Miller wants to know, hey guys, I get a pain. Uh, I just want to say to John, yep. uh, it should be launching next week. Week after. Week after. Realistically. Two weeks. <clears throat> Jess Miller wants to know, I get a pain in the front of my right shoulder only when incorporating standing upright rows into my shoulder routine. Are there some technique tips or an exercise that get just as effective stretch to prevent this pain? I get the same thing and I just don't do upright rows. What it is, man, and I used to get it when I was younger before I started doing rotator and all the kind of shit that I do to keep my shoulders nice and healthy, mm. is it's whenever you internally rotate your shoulder and pull up, mm. that's where a lot of people are gonna get, are gonna get pain. Um, the best way to do it is to strengthen your rotator cuff, so always make sure, every workout pretty much, but definitely before shoulder and chest workouts, do rotator cuff exercises, do some of these bitches, do some of these bitches. With a lightweight. With, with a light weight and, and warm those rotator cuffs up, but until it gets better, just don't do anything where you internally rotate and pull up. You can still hit the same like front and medial, like front, medial and Well, it's delts. hitting, it, whenever you do a standing upright row, I find it's, it, it hits medial delts and traps. I find it hits my traps more than medial That's what it's, so traps you can substitute for shrugs, barbell or dumbbell or if machine you shrugs. medial delts, then just do like side raises, standing mm. side raises, lateral raises, raises, any that's kind it. of side Just stay raises. away from what, what, what's giving you, you, uh, you the trouble. Sean William wants to know, hey guys, I'm currently on a leg push pull rest split. I was thinking about squeezing in a calves workout on rest days. Would this be too much and could it lead to overtraining in the long run? Uh, no, but I do. I've actually on the, for the last four weeks, I've just been on a push pull leg rest split. Yeah. I'm just chucking calves in on, um, on leg day. We've got a lot of questions. Look at that. Yeah, keep going. That's ridiculous. On leg day. I've been doing calves on leg day. CTF Keith 1994 wants to know, hey guys, I'm- If you're doing leg, push pull leg split properly, you'll be on a day off at the end. Uh, hey guys, I'm a team handball player. Can you guys suggest a supplement stack for me? No, next question. No, tell me to go, supplement stack. Handball, what the hell? <laughs> this is not a question, but what supplements would handball users do? It's a, they're a performance athlete. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Have you played handball before? Oh. It's actually, it's actually... I had friends at school, mate. I fucking play handball. No, it's not like what you play at school. It's an actual sport. It's a fucking Olympic I, sport, I, mate. I played four square in 
in year three. Keith, I've seen handball, and I would suggest that you hop on the Massive Joe's website, go to free plans, click on supplement plan, put your details in, and it will spit out a supplement plan for you. Just maybe go to the women's section. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> you can't go alienating viewers like that. All right, sorry to the handballers out there. F***ing hell. We are the kings. I, I, I don't mind. I watched handball last Olympics. I was into it. It's f***ing it's suspenseful. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's a big sport in Europe. We're in Australia, Legit. Mate. We play football. Anyway, we are the kings. Hey, bro, I've lost five and a half kilos so far, but want to get muscle, but still lose body fat. What should I be doing? Well, that's a fucking loaded question. That one. Um, um, He's lost five and a half kilos, but wants to build muscle, but still continue to lose body fat. What should I be doing? Do we have another half an hour? Yeah. That's an in-depth question, man. Yeah. Um, just like, go to the Master Joe's website, look at the free nutrition plan, the free supplement plan, and the free workout plan, and it will split out your information for you. Pretty much. Much more than we can do in one minute. Muhammad Jaffrey wants to know, hey guys, uh, a question from Singapore. I'm 1915 kilos and 20% body. Of course, there's a teenager pushing triples again. They all watch weekly work. Yeah. And I've been training for eight, eight months, and you're 115 is bad. I think we got the next Mr. Olympia. Yeah, the soldier. No, I'm doing a push pull leg split. Oh mate, look, I've got everyone <clears> on, <throat> mate. Everyone's on the push pull leg split. And I'm doing 20 sets per muscle group, in order, uh, in order of Monday to Sunday. I do push pull legs, push pull, push pull, pull. I don't know what he's doing. I already have decent legs from playing rugby. Uh, sometimes I take a day off from the week if I feel like resting. So I'd like to know, what are your comments on my routine? Am I doing too much that my muscles can't recover? So you're doing... You're doing Another loaded question. You're doing push one, two, three times. Pull. I'm about to take a piss break in this weekly work. You're doing push three times, you're doing pull three times, and you're doing legs once. It's too much. Too much. Too yeah. much. And especially if you're going walls. It's too much. If you're training at 100%. You're not training at 100%. You're not training 100%. Too much. You don't. Have, you shouldn't be able. You shouldn't be able to do 20 sets. No chance. At flat out, you're doing 20, 20 sets of tries, 20 sets of chest, and 20 sets of shoulders on it's push day. Much. That's 60 sets. You should too not much. be able to recover in two days. It's too much. Do you push pull leg rest day? Push pull leg rest day. Yeah. Push pull leg rest day. Yeah. Give it 100. percent Have that day off. On that day off, do some cardio to get below 20. percent Andy Conlon wants to know, hey guys, is there a chance of optimum nutrition, gold standard, 100% waste salted caramel being stocked at MJ's in the near future? Yeah, as soon as the distributor in Australia gets it, if it ever does. Go back to our comments on the delays in the US. Yeah, so if, if, yeah. uh, if, we, if it comes in, we'll get it, but it's not up to us. When is the best time to take creatine? Shayan Mama wants to know. I take it post-workout. With carbs? With carbs, with dextrose. Jakey447 wants to know, hey guys. Get it, as this goes back to another question, I actually get it in the jet mass. I'm taking jet mass and adenoflex, I'm using my gut, so. Jakey447 wants to know, hey guys, I was just wondering what you think about agmatine and GPLC, glycine propionyl L carnitine, stacked together and the benefits of it. Um, do you, I, I used to take GPLC, this is back in the day, I used to be a massive fan of agmatine, yeah. and Joe always was on the GPLC train. Right. And we Finally, thought, por que no los dos? Uh, and we stacked them bitches. Yeah, so Joe's come across the agmatine train. Mm -hmm. But um, I've never been a fan of GPLC. It just it hasn't given me ever a good pump. Well, GPLC is is a it's 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 the main reason why it works as a muscle volumizer is because of the glycine. Mm. It's glycine bonded to propionyl L carnitine. That's mm. GPLC. But what's going to give you the muscle volumizing is glycine, yeah. which is the same shit that's in oxygen. So I would take Ronnie Coleman stacked in O plus Purist Labs in oxygen. Yeah, or just agmatine in oxygen. Yeah, I would personally over Agmatine and GPLC. Yeah, I would agree. Jalal G wants to know, hey guys, I'm a 17 year old boxer and have my first fight coming up and need to drop weight, but don't want to lose strength. What's a good stack? I also hit the weight five times a week for the last eight months. Uh, coming up, uh, depends how, I mean, it depends how far out you are from your fight as well. Mm. Um, I'd, yeah, I mean, you, you, if as a boxer, mainly your diet and your training is going to do more so than, than any supplements coming up. Yeah. But if you want to, like, just like your drop stack, your um, drop factor, how old is he? Doesn't say. No, 17. 17 year old. Probably not drop factor. Not drop factor. Um, 
definitely a suitable carnitine, but I mean, at 17, man, it should be more focused on your diet and your training rather than relying on a stimulant fat burn. I wouldn't be doing that. I'd just be getting, if, you, if you're coming up for a fight, speak to your coach about training and diet and stuff like that. Jaden B wants to know, will Massive Joe's be stocking, stocking Doug Miller's stim-free pre-workout when it's released? Yes. We've got five minutes, we've got 10 questions, Neve. Chris B wants to know, uh, Joe says that B vitamins prevent the crash of a pre-workout supplement. How does this work? That's for you to answer. I don't know. No. They buffer the release of caffeine, man, generally speaking. Depends on which B vitamin you're talking about. But usually when you take B vitamins in uh, in conjunction with caffeine, they, they buffer the release of caffeine so you don't get that crash post-workout. Lewis Hughes wants to know, a few episodes back, Joe mentioned that if you don't have DOMS post-workout a few days later and you had killed the muscle group, technically it doesn't mean the workout wasn't productive. How else do you know if you're making gains correctly if you don't have DOMS afterwards? Well, you should still feel like you trained the day before. Yeah. I mean, if you wake up, if you train back and you wake up fresh, like you go train back again. Didn't train you hard probably enough. probably didn't train hard enough. Jimmy10452 wants to know, hey guys, love the vids. Just heard Steve Cook is coming to Australia for three weeks. Any chance you were meeting up for a video? Yes, he's coming to our uh, Fruit Punch store on Wednesday. Uh, Fruit Punch. Flinders Park store. Thank you. <laughs> Wednesday. We know our stores after flavors of supplements. Wednesday. 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 <laughs> Wednesday the 18th. Kane Guthrie wants to know, is glutamine worth taking post-workout? Uh, yes, if you're in a calorie deficit. Severe. Levi Fisher wants to know, wondering what your guys' opinions on recomping are. It seems like the average Joe getting ready for the beach season, not the massive Joe prepping for a show. There is no real reason to go through the extreme bulking and cutting phases. Yet I hear from the average gym guy, them always talking about their bulk or cut. I've just created a consistent, healthy lifestyle and made incredible progress. Um, yeah, I think the days are pretty much dead of people blowing out to say 25% body fat. Yeah. And putting on maybe... Two well, body, but competitive bodybuilders will still do the hardcore bulk and hardcore Yeah, they'll, cut. they'll still do a bulk, but yeah. they're not getting as fat as what they used to, I don't believe. No, and they're still well, staying like sort of maybe maybe 14% at the top, 14-15%. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, people, I think more so, cut and bulk is just a bodybuilding term for eating in a calorie surplus. Yeah. Cutting is used for eating in a calorie deficit. That's it. So, I mean, yeah, everyone's still doing that, but it's not going to the days where people are bulking out like just a seafood diet, seeing food and you eat it. Adam Dola wants to know, hey guys, I got a question about using a fat burner as a pre-workout. I currently have no time to do cardio except immediately post-workout and I know it's optimal to take fat burners shortly before cardio. As a pre-workout, can I mix a scoop of OptiBurn with some creatine mono and oxygen so that I can get the stims from the OptiBurn as well as the fat burning and muscle power from the creatine and oxygen? Cheers guys from New York, New York. Um, personally what I do and what you and you and I both do, Joseph, mm -hmm. is we'll have our pre-workout. Mm -hmm. So we'll have our pre-workout, and then as soon as we finish our weight training, we'll have some acetyl l carnitine. Yep. And then uh, keep sipping on BCAAs and then go do our cardio. That's it. So I personally wouldn't. I'd personally still be getting <coughs> the most. You get, you're burning fat and you're burning calories while you're weight training anyway. That's right. Um, you want to get the most out of your, out of your workout. You're going to get the most out of your workout by taking a pre-workout over a fat burner. Mm. More Correct. performance enhancing. So I'd use your your perform your pre workout before training. Yep. Then you then as soon as you finish, go to your bag, have a half a teaspoon, two grams of cedar carnitine. Yep. Keep sipping on those beast of blades while you do your cardio. Yep. Callum Mold wants to know. Uh, just wanted to clear something up for a mate from my question last week because he got a bit pissed off. George Mundell isn't the guy I was talking about. He's a hundred kilogram oak. Sorry for the confusion. Also, just wondering what you think would be the best pre slash intra stack to get. I can't remember the question last week, but I remember there was something we were talking about. about no, he said his friend, and he said a shout out to George from somewhere. That's right. And, and we, we thought and we George thought was, was George. his mate. So we're you can't remember like, what the question was about? No, we're No, nah, me neither. We're anyway. apologize, George. Best uh, pre and intra stack? Uh, pre Core Fury, Noxygen, Intra, MTS, Machine Fuel. With 95 serve, mixed with berry. With Carbolin. Mm, delicious. Although, when Core ABC comes out, we could be up for a Core Fury <laughs> Extreme pre workout stacked with the Core ABC and Carbolin. Oh, because it is delicious. And then you get the beta alanine oh, from Triumph. Richard Halabi wants to know, both you guys are extremely busy with work, gym and other commitments. Any tips to deal with the stress when it all feels like it becomes too much? 
Sometimes during exams, trying to balance good grades, gym, sport, etc. becomes hard. Any tips to manage stress during these busy and stressful times would be appreciated. Joe and I both um, put music on and go train. That's it. That's number one. That's our um, release, man. I think some other times, when I'm, when I'm real stressed out, what I'll do is I'll just put my phone down and obviously take away from distractions. Yeah, and just focus like, on the task at hand. Man. Yeah, and also break them big tasks down to little tasks, man. Yeah, put your phone out and just uh, you need to have some, you need to have some alone, like some alone, just relaxing time. I think. Yeah. So if that means half an hour at home, just bit put of downtime. Put everything down and watch a movie. Put a movie on for an hour or so, just to take your mind off of shit. Just relax and do yeah. that as well. The other thing, Richard, man, is your the amount that you stress is completely related to amount you let yourself stress. Yeah. So if you have a very low stress tolerance and you just you just don't accept the fact that you're going to be stressed you won't be stressed man yeah that's it you stress as much as you allow yourself to stress if you think, five questions left i think it's good i think one thing is that i think is that uh, like something that was stressing me out like last this time last week i mean yeah. it isn't even a factor now like yeah. you stress about it and then it's, it's all short term man. yeah everything's short term simplicity 22 wants to know i'm training for a special forces squad i'm required to bench my body weight which is 90 kilograms for reps I'm currently benching 70 kilograms for reps. I'm also required to be elite level aerobically fit. Would you recommend reaching my strength gains first with no cardio or should I start incorporating cardio now? You still want to be incorporating cardio because you don't want to get to benching 90 kilos and then go to run and realize that you can't run. Um, you need to, if you, if you bench, depends how far out you are from your special elite forces training. Yeah. But I mean, if you're benching 70 kilos for rep, for your body weight for reps now, yeah. like next week go put it to 72.5 and go for reps. Progressive then overload. Progressive. Man. Then go to 75 kilo. Just so you need to get 10 reps. You get 75 kilos, you might That's get it for it, eight man. reps. Next week you'll get That's 10 it. reps. Go up to 77.5. You might get seven reps, following it, you might get nine, then but you might still get ten. work on your cardio in the meantime. Yeah, but it's all about progressive overload. So you have yeah. to you, you have to give your body a reason to get stronger. That's right. Alistair Topping wants to know, hey, yo guys, do you track vegetables in your macros? Is it worth it? Big love from the UK, love the channel. You guys are gonna be a body power this year. I know it's only one question, so if needs, the first is more important. That's the only one we're gonna answer. I don't because I don't eat veggies. I do because vegetables contain macronutrients, so why wouldn't you track them? Done. Pocho Gonzalez wants to know, hey guys, just wondering, I'm 18 and two scoops of MTS Clash barely does anything anymore. Aside from the beta alanine tingles, even after cycling, should I be worried? Uh, you probably just have a real high stim tolerance. Yeah, two um, scoops of Clash is a lot of stims, man. Yeah, so... 250 I mean, minutes of caffeine for an 18 year old. Yeah. You shit. You said you cycled off, but have you cycled off completely off of caffeine for say four weeks, four to six weeks? Yeah. Like, that means like no soft drink, no coffee, no... No Red stimulants. Bull, no anything. No stimulants! So, I mean, a lot of people take off, off thing, but they'll have, still have three coffees during the day or they'll have a, a Coke Zero which has caffeine in it. I mean, it's, it's not cycling off. You have your Myo Insure or your Amino Energy which still has, oh, and Amino Energy which still has caffeine. So, get off of all stims. Max Berg wants to know, hey fellas, I recently tore a ligament in my ankle playing basketball and now I have to stay home and hit, can't hit them gains in the gym. Should I keep supplementing throughout my recovery until I can go train again? What's his name? Max Berg. So Max, you still got chest, back, shoulders, traps, tries. You just abs. tore an ankle. Um, Why is that stopping you? Even if you have to crutch it to the gym, man, I give a f I see guys all in the gym all the time crutching around. I've had between I've had because I'm still able to do like leg extension, hamstring curls, seated hamstring curls, laying hamstring curls. Yeah. Obviously you can't do leg press or anything like that. You'll probably stop being a bitch and go get yourself some games. I mean, at the moment you train six days a week, just cut leg day out. Do That's chest it. one day, back the next day, shoulders, try. You got absolutely everything. Yeah, and no continue to take your supplements, obviously. Because there's no reason just to- You're going to be training. no reason to sit at home. Cry about your ankle. Right. Yeah, go train every other muscle group. Last question, Dave. Ooh. Adam Parrish, and he's from England. Also in Great Britain, United Kingdom. I'm learning a bit about the You country. are, I'm you're learning, learning geography. Uh, I'm from England, been watching for a while now, love your weekly word. Can you, can you tell me both? That doesn't make sense. Can you? Can you tell me what your gym splits are per week? Thanks. At the moment. That's the last question. Push pull legs, push pull legs. And I'll have a day off when I need. I do a bro split, man. I train uh, on Monday, I train biceps with my brother and I on swell bait. On Tuesday, I train some chest. On Wednesday, I train that their back. On Thursday, I train that their triceps and calves. Friday, I train legs, and one week I train quads, and the other week I train hamstrings. So I only train quads once every fortnight, hamstrings once every fortnight, because my legs are strong. 
Saturday I train delts and Sunday is my rest day so I do uh, usually I'll do a little bit of abs like a quick ab circuit if I feel like training abs mm. or I just have the whole day off I'm only doing this push for leg day for about four to six weeks just to just swap up my training give my body something new that's interesting but on push day because I do push pull leg push pull leg on one push day I'll focus on chest on the other day I'll focus on shoulders on one week I'll focus on back and then later on in the week I'll focus on biceps over back then on one leg day I'll focus on quads and the next day I'll focus on hamstrings it's a lot of focusing I focus a lot mate you're very focused do you have anything else you'd like to add <laughs> before I tell the viewers to hit the subscribe button if Dillip decides to put it in this episode, he forgot the last one. Dillip. Subscribe you, to our YouTube say, channel. Did you say, did you see Dillip, the cutting specialist, mm. had an imposter in Weekly Word last oh, week? I did. Some guy called himself what? Dalip. Dillip, the chopping no, specialist no, was, or some shit? Like, Dalip, Dalip, or Dalip, or something. The chopping specialist. <laughs> the chopping. Dillip was not chopping. happy. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go get chopped for this next bodybuilding show yeah. I'm doing. Dillip, That's a new thing. Dillip, the real deal, the real deal was not happy. With mm. you do leap. Anyway, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay up to date with all the latest editions of Massive Joe's Weekly Word and all the other deliciousness in our YouTube channel. One f***ing question for Ask Neem. I'm sick of reading these f***ing. I get tricked. I get tricked. I read the first question. I read two, three more questions. Yeah. One question. I'm going to start proofreading this shit and crossing names off. Yeah. Where are we coming to them from, Neve? MassiveJoe's.com. Stay